Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today is January 16th, 2020. And the poem that I'm going to read to you today is by an English poet named W.H. Auden. He lived from 1907 to 1973. He is most famous for poems like The Shield of Achilles and The Age of Anxiety and many other poems. Uh, the poem that I'm going to read today is called In Memory of W.B. Yeats died January 1939. And indeed, Yeats did die, Yeats being himself one of the most important poets to ever write in the English language. He died on January 28th in 1939. So next week, um, in remembrance of Yeats's life and work, I'll read a couple of Yeats poems um, around the anniversary of his death. But today I want to read this poem, which is a bit long, called In Memory of W.B. Yeats. It's a quite a famous poem, um, and it's written in three parts. And because it's a little bit longer, I probably, uh, well, I may not be able to read it twice, depending on how long it takes. But this is how it goes. In Memory of W.B. Yeats by Auden. One. He disappeared in the dead of winter. The brooks were frozen, the airports almost deserted, and snow disfigured the public statues. The mercury sank in the mouth of the dying day. What instruments we have agree the day of his death was a dark, cold day. Far from his illness, the wolves ran on through the evergreen forests. The peasant river was untempted by the fashionable quays. By morning tongues, the death of the poet was kept from his poems. But for him, it was his last afternoon as himself an afternoon of nurses and rumors. The provinces of his body revolted. The squares of his mind were empty. Silence invaded the suburbs. The current of his feeling failed. He became his admirers. Now he is scattered among a hundred cities and wholly given over to unfamiliar affections. To find his happiness in another kind of wood and be punished under a foreign code of conscience. The words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living. But in the importance and noise of tomorrow, when the brokers are roaring like beasts on the floor of the boars, and the poor have the sufferings to which they are fairly accustomed, and each in the cell of himself is almost convinced of his freedom, a few thousand will think of this day as one thinks of a day when one did something slightly unusual. What instruments we have agree... The day of his death was a dark, cold day. Two. You were silly like us. Your gift survived it all. The parish of rich women, physical decay, yourself. Mad Ireland hurt you into poetry. Now Ireland has her madness and her weather still, for poetry makes nothing happen. It survives in the valley of its making, where executives would never want to tamper flows on south from ranches of isolation and the busy griefs, raw towns that we believe and die in. It survives a way of happening, a mouth. Three. Earth, receive an honored guest. William Yeats is lied to rest. Let the Irish vessel lie emptied of its poetry. In the nightmare of the dark, all the dogs of Europe bark, and the living nations wait, each sequestered in its haste. Sorry, slogan. I gotta say that stanza again. In the nightmare of the dark, all the dogs of Europe bark, and the living nations wait, each sequestered in its hate. Intellectual disgrace stares from every human face, and the seas of pity lie locked and frozen in each eye. Follow, poet, follow right to the bottom of the night with your unconstraining voice, still persuade us to rejoice. With the farming of a verse, make a vineyard of the curse, sing of human unsuccess in a rapture of distress. In the deserts of the heart, let the healing fountain start. In the prison of his days, teach the free man how to praise. So this poem is one of the more famous elegies written at least in uh, recent times. In fact, 
in the book that I've mentioned before, the, the Making of a Poem, a Norton Anthology of Poetic Forms by Mark Strand and Avon Boland, this is included in the section on elegies alongside poems like Robert Lowell's The Quaker Graveyard in Nantucket and alongside Walt Whitman's O Captain, My Captain and Matthew Arnold's Dover Beach and Thomas Gray's Elegy Written in a Country Churchyard, which I have read on this podcast before. I think several, most of the poems I just mentioned probably have been read on the podcast at least once and probably should be returned to again soon. But it's the kind of poem that, like any great elegy, focuses not just on what makes the man himself great, although it does that, but also on what makes um, w- what he has left behind, what he will be remembered for and by. Um, the work, the output, the thing that will keep people um, saying his name for centuries on. So it's, uh, it's true that the day of his death was a dark, cold day, but it's also true as the wolves run through the evergreen forests, so his, uh, his verse, his, his output will be passed on from generation to generation. After all, the words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living, which is one of the, the most striking lines or the striking uh, couplets, I think, in the 20th century. The words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living. They take on life uh, like, a, like a disease almost. I, I, I don't mean to, that sounds negative because these, his words are not a disease, but they take on uh, life in the guts of the living like something that's uh, feeding and feeding on an intestine or something like that. And I know that's a little gruesome. I think it's meant to be a little gruesome. It's meant to be a little dark, but it's also, I think, a a hopeful concept. Um, I think that's something that's common in Alden's work to keep you on your toes, so to speak, on whether you're supposed to feel uh, morose or hopeful about what he's saying in in some given line. There's a lot that could be said about this poem, but I think I will try to read it again. I know it's a little bit long, but I think it's worth it. So I'm going to cut off my comments here and let the poets, the poet and the poem speak for themselves. So once again, this is Auden's In Memory of W.B. Yeats. One. He disappeared in the dead of winter. The brooks were frozen, the airports almost deserted, and snow disfigured the public statues. The mercury sank in the mouth of the dying day. What instruments we have agree, the day of his death was a dark, cold day. Far from his illness, the wolves ran on through the evergreen forests. The peasant river was untempted by the fashionable quays. By morning tongues, the death of the poet was kept from his poems. But for him, it was his last afternoon as himself, an afternoon of nurses and rumors, The provinces of his body revolted. The squares of his mind were empty. Silence invaded the suburbs. The current of his feeling failed. He became his admirers. Now he is scattered among a hundred cities and wholly given over to unfamiliar affections, to find his happiness in another kind of wood and be punished under a foreign coat of conscience. The words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living. But in the importance and noise of tomorrow, when the brokers are roaring like beasts on the floor of the boars, and the poor have the sufferings to which they are fairly accustomed, and each in the cell of himself is almost convinced of his freedom, a few thousand will think of this day as one thinks of a day when one did something slightly unusual. What instruments we have agree the day of his death was a dark, cold day. 2. You were silly like us. Your gift survived it all. The parish of rich women, physical decay, yourself. Mad Ireland hurt you into poetry. Now Ireland has her madness and her weather still, for poetry makes nothing happen. It survives in the valley of its making where executives would never want to tamper. Flows on south from ranches of isolation and the busy griefs, raw towns that we believe and die in. It survives a way of happening, a mouth. Three. Earth, receive an honored guest. William Yeats is laid to rest. Let the Irish vessel lie empty of its poetry. In the nightmare of the dark, all the dogs of Europe bark, and the living nations wait, each sequestered in its hate. 
Intellectual disgrace stares from every human face, and the seas of pity lie locked and frozen in each eye. Follow, poet, follow right to the bottom of the night, with your unconstraining voice still persuade us to rejoice. With the farming of a verse, make a vineyard of the, of the cur- Sorry, Logan. With the farming of a verse, make a vineyard of the curse. Sing of human unsuccess in a rapture of distress. In the deserts of the heart, let the healing fountain start. In the prison of his days, teach the free man how to praise. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another...